Welcome to another episode of NOC Tech. As you can see from the title, it's AMD versus Intel. And if you're a computer geek like me, you probably already seen tons of videos discussing this. But there's one problem. It's not in Singapore. And in Singapore, our prices are not the same as our Angmore friends. But before we talk about that, let's talk about today's sponsor, Aftershock. And I know Singaporean mindset. Sponsored means it's going to be biased. It's going to be sh But I assure you, Aftershock didn't touch this video. They don't even have an input on this video. In return, I just give them 20 seconds of screen time, which brings me to Aftershock. Don't have the confidence to build a PC? Don't want the hassle of building a PC? Aftershock provides all your PC needs with desktop PCs, all-in-one PCs, laptops. And if you don't even know anything about PCs, Aftershock representative will be happy to consult on your PC needs. Link in the description to learn more. So in this video, I'll be comparing with the i9s and the Threadripper and the i7 with the Ryzen 7. Usually, I'll look at six things in a CPU. Core count, clock speed, performance, overclocking, compatibility, and price. But today, I won't be looking at core count, clock speed, and overclocking. Because core count and clock speed doesn't mean performance. And overclocking can be a own separate video on its own. I'll be briefly going through performance and compatibility. Then, the main focus will be Price. The test for all the CPUs will be synthetic benchmarking, gaming, video editing with Adobe Premiere Pro, and streaming. First, we look at the i7-8700K versus the Ryzen 7 2700X. Running synthetic benchmarks, AMD's 2700X just owns the i7-8700K. But usually, that means nothing if you're a gamer or actually in the real world. So running graphic benchmark, Unigine's superposition shows that the i7-8700K has a slight better performance than the 2700 X. However, when looking at real games like Fortnite, you can see a very interesting result. The i7-8700X does a lot better than the 2700X, but when you start streaming Fortnite using OBS X264 encoder, things change. The i7-8700K got hit hard on performance, and the 2700X was running as though it wasn't even streaming. Then, I tried Far Cry, where the game is CPU intensive, and for that result, it all evens out. Looking at other benchmarks, it's clear that Intel has the better performance, but for some games, AMD will have better performance. So who should I give this point to? I would say it's pretty much a draw. Intel still have the majority best gaming performance, but AMD does have better streaming performance. Next, we have compatibility. Intel has a 3-year-old 1151 socket still in use. Even old chips like the KB Lake i7-7700K won't run in a Z370 motherboard. Or the Coffee Lake i7-8700K won't run on the Z270 motherboard. Even though both sockets are 1151 and they fit, they just won't run. So Intel is due to change their socket very soon. On the other hand, and AMD AM4 socket is fairly new. The 1700X will run on the X470 motherboard and the 2700X will run on the X370 motherboard. No problem. Also, it was said that AMD will only change their sockets when the new DDR5 RAM is out, which is rumored to be released in 2019. So long story short, AMD won a point for compatibility. So AMD won, right? Well, kinda. Because one thing I haven't talked about is video editing, which I include this at the end because I know not everyone does video editing, so this won't apply to you. So the result shows that rendering time on AMD CPUs are just horrible. For some reason, AMD CPU are just not optimized for video editing software. Editing on it seems fine, but rendering time can be ridiculous. So if you ask me, as a content creator that needs video editing software, I would say Intel One. Last but not least is price. If you look at online stores like Lazada or Q10, you will see prices of the i7-8700K at $569, and that's the cheapest you can get. And it's the same with the Ryzen 2700X, which is $505. But this is where the interesting part come in. If you know where to shop at Simlim Square, you can find the i7-8700K at $515. And 
the Ryzen 7 2700X will cost, okay, $465. Do note, $465 is the expensive price. Like if I could have wait two days, it will be $450. And kind of overall, in my opinion, AMD kind of wins everything with compatibility and the streaming capabilities. Next, the i9-7980XE and the Threadripper 1950X. I know it's quite unfair to compare these two CPUs together. I'd rather have a cheaper i9 or get the Threadripper 2990 32 cores or something like that. But I do not have a cheaper i9 nor do I want to spend $3,000 on the Threadripper when it's not supposed to be $3,000. Which brings me to i9-7980XE cost which is $2,888 on last Lazada and the 1950X cost $1,451 on Lazada as well. And here's the thing, when I go to Simling Square, the 1950X cost $1,206. And for the i9-7980XE, well, let's just say they don't even sell it. Like the only one they sell is the 7900. So I'll give this point to AMD. Next, performance. Running synthetic testings with Cinebench would say that the 7980XE one by a little. But to think of it, for the extra price of 1,400 Singapore dollars, it definitely doesn't justify the performance. But again, who is gonna buy these processors? It's not really gonna be gamers. It's gonna be content creators, people that need software. So when I look at Premiere Pro rendering, it's very much the same as the Ryzen 7 and i7, where rendering time is not very good for AMD side. Because even a $500 i7-8700K can render faster than a Threadripper 1950X. There are even reports that Threadripper won't even render on DaVinci Resolve. It's like video editing software and AMD have some petty argument because that is just the result I get. Maybe when the Threadripper 2 is more visible to get, they may have better result but it's is really freaking expensive in Singapore. However, when editing on both systems, it feels the same. No lags, run smoothly editing on 4K, just the render time is bad. So who wins this battle? I gotta give this to Intel. Next, gaming performance and streaming performance. And I'm disappointed because I read all the news articles saying that Track Reaper was better for content creator, better for streamers. So I myself was rooting for AMD. But it's clear that Intel i9 CPUs are more optimized for everyday usage. Even the i9 streaming frame rates were better than Track Reaper's non streaming frame rates. I gotta give this point to Intel. Although, if you have a lot of knowledge of the i9 and the Track Reaper and you watch this, you probably will dislike this video because I know I'm not running these PCs to its full potential. But honestly, my workload don't usually use the full potential of these PCs. But having an i9 or Threadripper does help a little bit with video editing. Less lag. I'm talking about editing, lah, not rendering. Also, we didn't overclock these i9s or the Threadripper which are meant to be overclocked. If you're a gamer that wants to upgrade, having an i9 or a Threadripper don't really help your performance in game. You can just settle with the i7-8700K or the Ryzen 7. 2700X. To me, the Track Reaper and the i9s are like Ferraris that can go 200, 300 kilometers per hour. But you in Singapore, you only can drive at 100. In the tunnel, only 80 kilometers per hour. Unless you have a private track, i.e. your software that can really utilize all the i9 and Track Reaper power, then, only then, you should get it. So Aftershock did send us this and they did build it. Even though their site didn't provide any Ryzen stuff, if you want Ryzen PCs from Aftershock, you can just email them. They should be able to do it, no problem. Other than that, thank you Aftershock once again for sponsoring this video. If you want me to do the i5 with the Ryzen 5 and i3 with the Ryzen 3, do let me know in the comment section below. And again, I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much. Remember to click here for more. Click here to subscribe. Here. And yes. Oh.